Okay, here we have the last section for, um, last video for section 1.4. So in this um, video, we're going to be covering the concept of the quadratic formula, okay? Um, and what it says is if you have your quadratic equation in this form, you can pick out just the number coefficients Plug them into this formula and you'll get the solutions to the problem. So you don't have to factor it. You don't have to have it in that nice little squared way so that you could do the square root property. You could just plug in the numbers and it'll all work itself out, okay? This also helps with polynomials or trinomials that cannot be factored. So there might still be a solution. It's just a really weird, ugly solution, okay? Um, it either is imaginary or it's just got some ugly decimals or square roots in it, okay? But just because you can't factor it doesn't mean there's not a solution. It's just not a nice, pretty solution. Um, so let's go ahead and, and go in through this. Now, there are all kinds of ways to memorize this. You do get to use a note sheet on your test. So the quadratic formula is definitely one of those formulas that you want to have on your um uh, formula sheet okay now I did learn some little way that some one of my students told me a long time ago and for some reason it stuck with me but it said a negative boy couldn't decide whether he wanted to go to the house party or not he didn't want to be square so he decided to go because he didn't want to miss out on four awesome chicks. Once, he, uh, as he was there, the party was not over until 2 a.m. in the morning. So that was the little thing. So a negative boy couldn't decide whether he wanted to go to a house party, he didn't want to be square, and he didn't want to miss out on four awesome chicks, so he went, but the party was over at 2 a.m. I don't know why that stuck in my brain. I have heard a million other different kinds of ways to memorize this formula, but for some reason, that's the one that stick. And now that I know it, I don't need to think about that little scenario in order to memorize it. I just memorize it by default now. So it's nice to with cute little clever things like that just till you get it and then once you get it you don't really need those little um, analogies anymore okay so for this one notice that this one is not equal to zero so I can't solve it using the quadratic formula just yet but if I minus three on both sides I get this and now I can use the formula but before I do I like to identify my variables my coefficients so here my coefficient is one here my coefficient is positive six and my constant is negative three. So I'm gonna plug this into my function. So negative six plus or minus six squared minus four AC all over two times A. Now notice one thing that I did. Every time I plugged in a number, I put it in parentheses. That is so important, you have no idea, okay? Especially when your numbers are negative, if you don't put them in parentheses here or here, you're likely to make a mistake, okay? So make sure when you plug in your numbers, you always put them in parentheses. Now the first thing you wanna do when simplifying this is simplify what's here on the outside. That's just the negative six. And you also want to simplify what you have on the inside. So my calculator, I'm going to type parentheses 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 3. And it gives me 48. And then you want to simplify what's at the bottom, which is a 2. So you definitely need to simplify those in those pieces first before you continue. Okay. And if this is negative, you take out the I. If it's not, you leave it alone. Um, but then in the next step, you definitely want to simplify that square root. So the square root of 48, oops, I pressed the wrong button. Square root of 48 is 4 square root of 3. 
Now, both of these terms can be divided by two. So what I want to do is I want to simplify those by two. So this will reduce to negative three. And remember, you can only simplify things that are outside the square root. Do not try to simplify something inside the square root. So the two can reduce with the four, giving you two. And the square root just comes down. So I have two simplified answers. I have negative three plus two square root of three, and I have negative three minus two square root of three. Now this is the exact answer. If for some reason they ask you for the decimal answers, you can just type these in here individually and type the double arrow here. Or if you're using a different kind of calculator, convert your fraction to a decimal or whatever it is. I get, you have to approximate these though, 0.464. And then for the other one, negative three minus two square root of three. Again, double arrow, and you get negative 6.464. So remember, this is a rounded version, not an exact answer. If they ask you for exact, this one is it. If they ask you for a decimal or a rounded answer, then you just use the double arrow in your calculator, it'll convert it to a decimal. But at least you can do the exact versions on the calculator, on this calculator. Whereas some of the other calculators, you cannot get the exact um, solution. You'd have to do it by hand. So here, let's try this one. Notice my squared term is positive here, which means I'm going to be moving these two terms over to that side. When I move the 3x over, it's going to become minus 3x. And when I move the 5 over, it's going to become plus 5. So here my a is equal to 4, my b is equal to negative 3, and my c is equal to positive 5. So I'm going to plug all of these numbers into my formula. So I have b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So then we get here, we get positive three. Here, let's see, I don't know. And like I said, you definitely wanna double check your So then we get negative 71 over eight. Now, I do have a negative in there, so the negative does have to come out as an I. I don't have a choice about that. I cannot type that square root in my calculator without taking that little I out. Now, the square root of positive 71 does not simplify. So this is it. And there's only a coefficient of 1 here. 1 cannot reduce with 8, and it just so happens that 3 cannot reduce with 8. So I don't need to rewrite this in any kind of way. I don't need to split the fraction or any of that. The big giant fraction is perfectly okay. So what I do need to do is split it up and say um, three plus i squared is 71 over eight and three minus i squared is 71 over eight. Now, if the computer does not accept this, if they say something like write answers in A plus B I form, if the directions say that, then you do have to split the fraction. Not only do you have to split it, but you have to write it really weird. So I can split the fractions, that's not a problem, putting each one over eight. And even though I can't reduce them, they want the i on the side, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna say three over eight plus square root of 71 over eight with an i on the side, not at the top, not at the bottom, on the side, okay? Same thing over here, three over eight minus square root of 71 over eight with the i on the side. You've got to write it like that. That's only if they say they want it in this form. 
If they don't, this is your solution. If it does say that, then this is your solution. Okay. Now we've got one more, but if, and it's the last problem that we have to do, but if you notice, this is in no way the form that it needs to be in, right? So ignore these directions, we're just solving this quadratic equation. So in order for me to put it in that form, the first thing I have to do is actually FOIL this out. So 6x squared plus 4x minus 3x minus 2. And my x squared term is positive, so I'm actually going to minus the 5x over. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to actually combine my like terms. So I have positive 4x minus 3x minus 5x. That gives me a negative 4x, and I'm going to bring down my negative 2. Now, if you notice there's a GCF here, you can factor it first. Um, or if it's just a number that they have in common, you don't have to worry about factoring it. You could just divide everybody by that number. What this does is it, it makes it so that you might not have to do the reducing here, okay? If you can do the reducing before square roots are involved, that's always nice, right? So if I do divide everybody by two, I get three x squared minus two x minus one. And now I'm going to plug it into my quadratic formula. So I get x equals negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This becomes positive 2. The bottom becomes 6, and I'm not sure about the inside. So let's put that in the calculator, and we get 16. And there's actually a square root of 16. The square root of 16 is 4. So we have two answers, 2 plus 4 over 6 and 2 minus 4 over 6. And these are no square roots involved. These are like terms. So I can combine them. And when I do that, this ends up becoming 1 and negative 1 third if I reduce. So that is my solution set, 1 and negative 1 third. And that is the end of section 1.4. In the next section, we'll actually be learning um, how to solve other types of equations, not just quadratic equations. However, we will be using the information on how to solve quadratics to solve those other types of equations.